Okay, welcome back, everyone. We have Ramon Sigatala. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Close enough. Yes. <laughs> welcome to the show, man. Um, <laughs> and Thanks. big, con- big congratulations on uh, twenty-three years of training and um, and hitting your forties. <laughs> now I'm forty. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big up. Um, so you started parkour in the year 2000 that is um way before even like the first wave of um parkour practitioners in the uk like before jump london and jump britain yes Um, yeah how did you find parkour in 2000 because it was way before those documentaries and you must have been in a very small handful of people that um had found the sport or heard about the sport at that time yes yeah, first of all, it's an honor to be at your podcast. I like it very much. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, in 2000, my, my neighbor, Roger, he saw um, like a short trailer in a television, in a French television. And um, then he was going out training maybe two, three months. And then he asked me if I want to join. And mm. uh, I, don't, I never heard before about Le Parcours. And then I said, yeah, why not? What are we going to do? And it was just jumping around. Do you know how he found out about it? Yeah, he saw it uh, like uh, in the television, like a 20 second uh, trailer from a French from a French documentary. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because here in Switzerland, we have also the, the French television. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So oh, I'm so curious what that was. Do you, do you remember what it like what it was for? Who was in it? I don't know. It's one of the first, I think, 1999, the documentary in French. I don't, I don't know, know the name. Oh, man. Yeah, everything back then is like, yeah, as, as of, far as parkour is so mysterious. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> But then in 2002, um, we met uh, Danny Labaka in Thun. That's 15 kilometers from my hometown. Oh, no way. Yeah, he had a show. And then we thought, what, this is this a special guy? really special that he <laughs> even back then in yeah. 2002 yeah and then 2005 it was, i think it was youtube um, yeah 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 and 2006 was uh, danny triptolis and then mm. remember okay this guy he's really special yes <laughs> long time ago, yeah knew about it before everyone else yeah. knew yeah <laughs> oh amazing wait he was doing shows back in 2002 like internationally because yeah. yeah. i know he had that I can't even remember what year it was when he had that. Um, do you remember that video or show he did where he was he was running around like a horse? Oh, what's it called? Where the horses yeah. jump over the yeah, like bar, yeah, 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 and he was like dive rolling over them and yes. everything, like yeah, trying yeah. to remember race that. them or yeah. get a better time or whatever. I think but, that was for uh, Eurosport, 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 something like that. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway your your journey not danny's yeah it's your podcast <laughs> yeah and then uh yeah we was training i think yeah training we're jumping around for three years and then in 2003 we uh was visiting uh was we going to to Lis? uh because we thought um when when he talked about the philosophy uh in parkour and we for us we we didn't feel feel that so right. we decided we have to go to to visit him, mm. and uh, yeah, we only kn- knew that he lives in Lis, and then we we go and we find him. <laughs> Made the pilgrimage. Yeah, and then <laughs> to we find realized, the Grand Master. <laughs> yeah, and then we re- realized uh, we didn't train; that's just uh, jumping around. Yeah, and then we came back, and since then, doing conditioning stuff repetition yes yeah yeah i feel like that's um the vibe i get from back then around like 2005 to 2008 or something everyone that made the pilgrimage came back with these like yeah stories of like oh yeah no one no one trades properly it's just like yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and then what properly turns out to be tends to be like a lot of this really rigorous conditioning which is it's a huge part of the sport for the founders well like um it was their practice essentially yeah. and i think the the movement and the jumping was kind of a later 
thing i suppose well it was all part of like even the physical training it was it it was sewn so deeply into the mental training like there was the the mental side in the sense of overcoming jumps but also the uh the mental side of physical training so like pushing yourself half how far you can go yeah Um, yeah yeah. exactly yeah for us it was like a game changer yeah it's crazy really nice so coming back um to switzerland you had uh lots of ideas buzzing around your head what was the what was the main thing you came home with um with the muscle up because i remember i was hanging in Lis on on a tree and then he did like a muscle up and I thought, yeah, looks easy. I can do that. <laughs> All right, yeah. And then here was finish. And then he said to me, if you can't do this, you don't have to come back here. Right. So <laughs> I go home. And then that was the goal to, to do a, a, a nice muscle up on a yeah. on a <laughs> that, <Jeez>. that... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very exclusive. I mean, that is um that is very much what it sounds like training with uh david back in yes. the day like yeah. um if you weren't willing to yeah push yourself to your very limits then you're not worth his yeah. time or whatever like <laughs> yeah, it's just, just two ways you have to go with him or you go home yeah it's crazy and i know that is uh even um the the yamak guys teaching now uh, they're, they're not that is not their mentality like um and everyone else coaching is trying to create this very inclusive environment where they're focusing on what the person can do not like some arbitrary standard um and if you're not tough enough then you can go home or like uh yeah i think a lot of martial arts gyms um are like that um and maybe crossfit as well like yes there are some toxic places and maybe yeah i don't know there are a lot of stories about david which sound yeah. very toxic but let's not not go into yeah, that for me it was a good experience because i was used to it to to can do everything because yeah. sports it's for me it was like easy yeah every, ball sports and then for me it was really nice to see hey you have you have to train you have to train more yeah want- yeah 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 I get the appeal. I get the appeal for sure. Like there is certainly that side, especially if you watch like a lot of Kung Fu movies, Dragon Ball Z and everything, yeah, where it's yes, like, yes. you really have to like, <laughs> like be up to master Roshi's standards or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah it is interesting. But I think that, that adds to like the mysteriousness of, of um, the very early days of parkour. And, yeah. Yeah. It changed a lot, but I think it's at the moment it's really a really good combination be- between the old school guys and the, the new generation. I think this will be the, the form, the perfect athlete, the, the yeah. mindset, and the knowledge from now. If you if you uh, train with weights, I think if you if you train both, then you are really really nearby the perfect athlete. Yeah, I think. I'd, I'd really like to go into um, like the old school methods for um, like physical training and like what the more newer school methods for physical training a bit later on. But like, I really yeah. do want to um, pick at more of your experience um, okay. as like an OG in the sport. Like, yeah. uh, so like after 2006, 2007, um, what, what kind of changed and and maybe a better question is when and why did you guys you started parkour one or yes or wait did parkour one come from berlin first mm. martin gessinger yeah um it was like i think the first guy guys outside of france was uh, roger me and felix in this and then in 2000 yeah that's crazy <laughs> in 2004 or five, we had the, the first meeting in Stuttgart. And then we met uh, the, the German guys like uh, Ben and uh, Martin. Mm. And then we, we realized that we, we do the kind of uh, the same thing because they was from the Chamakasi inspired mm. and we was from David. Mm. And then we decided actually we can do everything together. Um, so it was like parkour one all for one one for all yeah yeah 
Yeah, so the community was 2005 mm. and the company was uh, founded in 2008 from Roger and Felix. Yeah, mm. and I decided in 2006 um, to, uh, to cancel my handball career. And That's only, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Do only the parkour stuff. And uh, at this time, a lot of people say, yeah, you're crazy, you can't do that because I was a chief also. Um, right. And so I decided to everything I learned to put it on the side and try to build up something new. So at this moment, it was totally stupid. Mm. Uh, but now, 20 years later, you can say, yeah, it was the right decision because you know that in, in normal sports, you are with 30, 35, you yeah. know, you are gone and then the next gen comes yeah maybe you are a coach and uh, mm. i know I'm, I'm not like the new guys like like you or, or yeah new i think mm. from the from the power with 40 there's a, i think i can still go farther but i feel i'm not like the power guys you know that sure oh uh, but yeah you've you've got tons of tons of other stuff i wouldn't <laughs> yeah. discount yourself just purely uh on on any lack of power or or anything like that but um i think you mentioned this um kind of differentiation between art du déplacement and um the the yamak guys and parkour david and this split and everything and maybe that's um maybe that's a topic for another day yeah. um but it is it is very interesting what you um like how we how we view um competitive sports yeah i mean i mean most competitive sports they're very much focused they're very much outcome driven especially when when you go into a competitive sport um i don't know how the culture surrounding handball is but yeah. a lot of other um a lot of other competitive sports they seem to be like e even physical education in school uh, especially in the u.s are funneling like talent towards this point of specialization trying to weed out the uh weed out the weak and separate the wheat from the chaff and get the strong ones to then push into competition and then they get a scholarship or whatever and um then they live out their competitive life and give everything to the school and the sport. Um, mm -hmm. And then they're like all used up with overuse injuries. If mm. they even get to the age of 30 in their sport. Um, so yeah, maybe, <laughs> and maybe then like you can be a coach who can't even yeah. like demonstrate yes. the sport yes. properly. Yeah. Um, that is certainly like a culture that we would do good to steer away from in parkour and i don't know if there are many gyms that are pushing that just yet but um it would be interesting um to see how because right now there isn't so much um financial incentive to take for gyms or schools or whatever to take that route with parkour but yeah who knows what will change with the Olympics? I don't know if you've thought about any of this stuff. This is yeah. such a big tangent in the conversation. I think that will uh, make a big impact and um, changing a lot because um, sometimes I, I miss the, the days when I practice handball because at this time you have to be ready on, a, on the point. You, you, you knew at Saturday, two o'clock, you have to be ready for the game right so it's a different um kind of training of course and but sometimes i miss it um because I, I knew a lot of guys who are motivated and then they lose the motivation because they uh, don't have a goal and so right. if you don't have a goal then and that, that i think that's the, the most difficult part in parkour that you know why you have to train and that is the, the positive side in the other sports that you know yeah to win, you have to be uh, ready at exactly this point. If you train for four years uh, for the Olympics and then you miss it up, I think that's for the mind. It's really, really yeah. hard to, to come, I think come over. Yes. It is, uh, it is a very, very important point. Um, and I think you have to have... I think that this idea of extrinsic motivation in parkour, like being led by something that is external to 
whatever is just driving you like the happiness of doing the thing that is driving you like we demonize that motivation quite a lot and um i think a perfect balance that obviously changes over time goes up and down between like intrinsically motivated being up here and extrinsically motivated like changing um i think a good balance is just quite healthy really like um i don't know because there are so many other motivations that come in and out of your life that aren't parkour as well that yeah. can interfere um but yeah maybe that is like a good segue into um mm. uh asking how what's your secret sauce like how have how has uh training parkour for 23 years stayed so fresh and kept yeah. you motivated yeah I, that actually it's one of the most uh asking question but i'm if, uh that people ask me because I, I can't I, actually I can't re uh, answer that because I was moving from the beginning yeah like handball, basketball all the stuff and then since parkour it was like I, I have to I have to move I, I can't walk normally you you know that feeling and everybody yeah. else also right yeah and but I think it's um because I start so early and the first yeah six six or seven years the goal was to train until 50, 60, 70. Mm. That, that mindset, it, it, it is so much in, in me. Mm. I, I can't ex uh, explain that, but um, I don't know when I'm, when I would start today um, with parkour, I think I'm totally different. Maybe I will say, okay, I have 20 years on a high level and maybe mm. I can, I can um, earn money from movie and shows and uh, i don't know uh but now uh, for me it's it's really difficult to explain i i have the motivation in me it, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you, you every, can't like you yeah. can't know what it is if if you've never felt um any dip in motivation it's just like this is just my yeah. current state <laughs> this is my perpetual state i mean um yeah i kind of am on the same wavelength as that but I mean, we have inevitably seen like in the time that you've been training and and me alone, I've been training coming up to 17 years and I've seen so many people come and go. Um, yes. And, and good people. I, yeah, great people that yeah. also swear like parkour yeah. is my life, man. I want to be doing yeah. this when I'm 50, when I'm 60. And then um, like almost in the blink of an eye sometimes, uh, yeah. it you go from super passionate to then something else is uh yeah doing that for you or you just drop out completely and just have to get a normal job and it's understandable i know how course, yeah. that can work and it is very healthy at the same time to um you know try some other stuff in life <laughs> um and also it's super healthy not to put all your eggs in one basket and just focus on parkour your whole life. Like, yeah, you probably should go and get a job or focus on family or something. Um, but as, yeah, as, that, that's, but, that's, that's also the point because I never stopped with all the other stuff. Yeah. Like, that's the thing you can yeah. manage it. <laughs> and yeah. And then the motivation was like, if you, if, if I see the store guys or now the, the mm. fat guys, the the new techniques the the power that it motivates me mm. and, um so i i say to me i have to learn this technique um mm. i want to you know that the fifa skills by the players right for me it was, i i have to every <laughs> every skill i want to be as good as possible i yeah. know it's not it's not um possible everything full yeah 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 you can try so but it's driving you like yeah. just just to know like yeah. oh shit i got to do this yes. more stuff now this more yeah. stuff that i've seen online and yeah, that, yeah that's amazing yeah I, for example if if i see you in, in the gym who's doing the jump with the weight then i see okay maybe that's a good exercise for me also mm. um, and i think it's just inspire each other and then mm. if you have enough friends and enough uh, um role models then mm. you, you never stop why, why, yeah. why i should stop because I, I I heard people when you are, you have to look when you are thirty you you have problems you are thirty five and you are forty when you were father and now I'm forty and a father yeah. I still wake up and I have to move 
Yeah, yeah. And you teach parkour and you're a chef as well? No chef, I was counseling in 2006. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. but you still yeah. got the skills. Yeah. You definitely still well, got I'm, the skills. I've been teaching parkour since 2005. Yeah. Um, five times a week in the evening. And yeah. uh, did phew, a lot of hundred workshops. But the workshops, I now I get it to the, to the younger guys. Mm. Um, but when I'm teaching, it's like a motivation for me for myself. Um, I saw the if if you see a, a guy who's starting by you with six years old, now he's 18, then yeah, 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 yeah. So much, and um, that's just uh, nice, yeah. Yeah, I, I really, yeah, maybe now's a good time to get into parkour one. And, um, yep. as, as we mentioned, your you guys, uh, coach is it just in switzerland and uh germany where parkour one is based um at the moment actually i don't we have so many classes we had i think in, in Netherlands we had one but i don't know if it's still there most of them they are in germany and switzerland yes mm. and over the years i've heard you've had thousands of students yeah, come through your yeah. doors and yeah uh, i think only in switzerland we have more than 25 classes um we train twice a week and the classes are around 20 25 people mm. and um yeah but the, most of the coaches are are um like uh they study something or they work something right. else than they teach in the evening um but i think we have around 10 people in switzerland who do only only the the coaching stuff or they are in the office from nine to five and doing education stuff and um, yeah concepts mm. yeah. okay sweet um so yeah you said um parkour one started in 2008 right yes and there, there are these um what is it the five principles you have the the um the logo or the graphic with the hand and yeah. with each with each digit has a uh, has one of these principles can you yeah. can you remind me? Yeah, that, everyone, that's what they actually are? it's uh, the old one. We have now we have new, but I can teach you the old one because it's easier yeah. to to remember. Uh, this one is um, no competition, so mm -hmm. no judging. You you don't say this is good, this is bad. Mm. And that um, doesn't mean as simple as like yeah. no formalized competition, but like within yeah. training, like yeah. yeah, yeah. This one is uh, be careful. Like mm -hmm. the mother or the father who told you as a kid, be careful because that's the only thing you have. And uh, the middle finger, we turn it on the other side and say it's uh, <laughs> the other side. <laughs> yeah, it's a respect. We have to respect the environment and mm. uh, yeah, your your uh, uh, friends who train so with you. The exact opposite of the middle finger, the other way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, then this one is uh, the ring ring finger it's mm -hmm. for the re relationship between you and uh, maybe the uh, your your training partner or the the spot mm. um and this one is the shortest one it's like the modesty um you never are the best so mm. uh, you don't have to sh show up and if you com combine this it's like a uh, courage you have to be brave to um decide in your life or to jump or not to jump mm. um i remember your jump from from the asia trip i think <laughs> it's, i think it's everything everything together <laughs> maybe, everything. Yeah. maybe apart from the respect because there was a security guard that was shouting ah, okay, at me yes. while i was in the air <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so maybe pop i mean i i didn't not respect him it's just like i you know you know how it is. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> I didn't yeah. want to disrespect him, yeah. but I wanted to do the jump at the same time. Yes. Yeah, it, it is it talking about the um the parkour and Ardu Déplacement, Yamakasi and David split. Yeah. That sounds like a perfect um combination of both their philosophies. Yeah. yeah. Which makes sense as the how, yeah. how you mentioned. Yeah, because one. I, I met a few of the Chamakazi guy and also like Charles and uh, Sebastian are uh, quite good friends. Mm. And for us, it was never like separate from, from the movement, from the feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
the guys have trouble in the past and mm. I wasn't there. I have no opinion, um, mm. but I, I like all of them. So it's not to me to touch. To touch oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not saying that, but like taking taking all the good bits and yeah. and forming a philosophy from that. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I guess from from what I've seen of um of course i was a part of um etrefort sponsored team and came and stayed with you in moonsing in switzerland yeah. and i got to um i got to join in with um some of the coaching there as well as um recently last year you guys invited um me to uh parkour ones I, was it every everyone the name yes. of the event? Yep. Uh, and I got to coach alongside you guys as well, and and see how you guys coached. It is, um, there's something special about it because it is very old school. But <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope you guys aren't offended. But it also seems quite culty in the way that right. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll yeah, let, and, and and maybe this isn't a bad thing, <laughs> but um. Let, let me um tell you a story of my um ha, my experience with uh, a session which i took part with as a student yep. with um uh oh god why can't I, why am i being an idiot why am i forgetting his name roger with roger i'm being yes. an idiot yeah. um yeah i attended a class with roger and there was so we 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 were uh, there was a segment of the class when we were doing roles and it was like a line with five different roles on cobblestone concrete. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> anyone who knows like roles on concrete already suck. Yeah. And at the beginning, before um, giving the task, um, Roger came over to me. And he's like, "You like roles, Callum?" And I was like, "Yeah, I like roles." I'm more often than not, I can take a roll on concrete and I'll yeah. grit my teeth and pretend I'm not in pain. Um, <laughs> and then um, we did this run, maybe by the 10th time or something, I uh, sat out because the, the pain just became unbearable. And I get like a huge red lump <laughs> whenever I've rolled on concrete too much. Yeah. Um, so I just sat out and, and uh, Roger came over to me. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to sit out, man. Um, I'm in too much pain. This just isn't doing me any good anymore. And he was just like, but I thought you liked rolls, Callum. And I was like, what? what is this like punitive, like... Yeah class that i found myself right. in and yeah. then and then later on in the session um we finished off with some push-ups also on like we we're on gravel now uh i think outside this um the school where the class took place and everyone's doing push-ups on their fists yeah and um so there's me doing push-ups on my fists joining on never done this before yeah. um so I have little baby fists <laughs> and um, yeah, man, it's crazy um, <laughs> for, for everyone listening. Ramon is just showing me his fists right now. And they are, um, they are as all your students calloused to heck. This is like fight club. This is like yeah. fight club. You know yeah. what I mean? With the scar, everyone in. Yeah. Actually, I didn't, I didn't feel something here. It's 23 years on the fist. I, this one, I, I don't feel it. <laughs> oh man you're, you're you're different you're all different <laughs> but anyway um so i i did we did a few sets of 10 i think it was and then after that i was like and and we're staying in the position as well so like active rest in that position after after those sets i i transferred onto my palms and continued doing the press-ups and roger was like callum looking at me and then everyone else looking at me as well like side on like all in push-up position yeah. still in this big circle and roger was like we do push-ups on our fists here yeah. and i was just like oh my yeah. god where <laughs> am i like yeah. <laughs> so like and um also lynn because L lynn came with us uh yeah. last year 
to um everyone in Bern. Yes. And um she noticed when coaching the others as well, um, that everyone had these calluses on their fist. Mm. And um yeah, she was she was taken aback by it. And I was like, yeah. And I told her this same story as well. It's like they're they're all like that bad. <laughs> yes. Um and yeah, anyway, maybe I should stop talking and let you talk for a second. No, it's okay. It's it's really funny because for me, the, the fist is uh for me it's just like I did it all always like this. For me, it's yeah, nothing special. But um I think it's come from from the martial art training. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beginning. Um but you you said it's a it's a little bit a, a weird feeling, uh, like a cult. Yeah. yeah 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 <laughs> for me it's uh, actually for me and myself it's it's the same because okay. we have so many we have so Phew, many, it's not that <laughs> you know we have so many um different coaches and um so many uh, different opinions mm. and i think i'm i'm one one of the only ones who has um changed a lot in the in, in the mindset okay. of course i'm still an ot and i do the thing on the face but for me it's a little bit too much mm. Um, you're not you're not just in the the bubble of yeah yeah it's of not, in yeah, rinsing and parkour one bubble coaching and of yeah. course there's a huge community in that yeah. but yeah you dip your toe I, outside i'm still in the bubble but i think i, I try to uh, look more on the outside mm. and learn from from everything um but for me it's a little bit too much uh t touchy so some not everything but it's a um, too much talking, so too much talking, okay. not moving. Um, the ther the theoretical stuff. It's it's really nice if you go uh, uh, in this institution like police and government. That's then you can give like a pro prospect, mm. yeah, the concept, and then they are thinking, okay, that's nice. But for me, it's it's too much uh, theoretical stuff and not not moving. Um, yeah, sure. But when I maybe you remember I, I do the the Ruyats, the five hour strength training, mm -hmm. um, and ten years ago there was uh, like a session on the fist one mm -hmm. hour, and you do push ups, then you go back on the elbows. Oh my god! On the fist, but only at one least hour. your fists get a rest for when yeah. you're on your elbows. Yeah. <laughs> it's one one hour, and this one is uh, still from from then ten years ago, and it's just like this one is stupid so uh if you train like this you mm. destroy yourself so since since six years the the training is only for the mental thing mm. and a lot of guys say yeah if you do five hours uh, strength training it's not healthy um and i know that it's just for the mind for me yeah, not healthy yeah, yeah, yeah. if you drink alcohol mm. or you smoke or eat or yeah walking blind on the street that's also not healthy <laughs> um but uh, that uh, experience you had with the fist yeah. by Roger, it's I think it's ninety percent in our strength training is uh, okay. for the mind. Only yeah, for the mind. yeah, that's the thing. That's yeah. that's what is yeah. so misunderstood about yeah. um, the old school methods yes. and uh, parkour generations and yeah. and the way they train as well. Then they're, they're not necessarily trying to create athletes with yeah. the way they do their strength training. It yeah. is to create strong people in mind and body yeah. which is yeah. which is where yamakasi comes from in uh, uh yeah. the language of lingala from the congo is it strong man yes yeah yeah i, I think it means strong man yes yeah. yeah yeah i think i think that's what it was uh strong body strong mind strong man i think yeah, but yeah. and also it's um when i look back at the days when we start with training, we realized that the, the, the guys who was, uh, came to us for, for training, they were twice in the week. And so we have to inspire them how they can train. Mm. So it's not only five days at the week, you have to train two hours, yeah. three hours only for the mind. It's just to give them ideas how you can train. And if somebody wants to train with weight or... Uh, doing just conditioning it's fine um but it's just uh to give them an idea how 
they can train because yeah. you know 90% wouldn't train um like that for him for the young yeah alone at home i think almost nobody would train like that okay so in, in terms of um because as as i said earlier you've had thousands of students um as parkour one in total and and of course i saw how many came to your event in summer in bern yeah. and um your cult seems like it's thriving it's very happy and they all have these these uh they all have these knuckles and mm. they're all amazing and stuff as well i'm i'm wondering how many do you because i've wondered this with parkour generations as well uh mm -hmm and the way they coach parkour i wonder how many of the students that they turn away with their style of training like how they um, exclude people that just want to come and jump and then suddenly they're they're doing these uh extreme endurance challenges or or some conditioning that they had no idea was a part of it if they've only seen like um mm -hmm stuff on instagram or youtube and just or seeing someone doing parkour in a spider-man or pikachu costume or something and mm -hmm. <laughs> seeing them imagining them being quite surprised um to come in and then they're exerting all this effort um so what what i guess my question is what's the student retention like um how, how many students do you think you retain how many do you think you um scare off with this kind of training Oh, that's a really difficult question. Yeah. Mm. So I can't give you a number. I think yeah. I, it depends yes. when when they started because when the, the, the students who started in 2005 by us, mm. most most of the guys um who trained for five or six years, mm. they are still in the class. That's crazy. Because yeah. Because they they um um so everything like the the change with parkour free running olympia blah 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 and um the guys who start maybe three years ago uh, they don't have the same goals they yeah. start with 15 and then our training is if they want to be a, a pro athlete our training is too much uh, on the mind um yeah of course they they are fit and uh, they build mm -hmm. muscle but they don't uh, jump 14 foot because they don't train with weight. Yeah, sure. So I, it's really hard to say. I yeah, think... I guess I guess it's, there's so yeah. many factors as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Bad question. I just wanted to see how, how you felt about it and wondered if you had any insights or, or have felt any times where you might have excluded um, someone and yeah. then they'd like you look they look like they have a really negative but, time and felt excluded because everyone yeah. else is is stronger what, what i can say is that the most of them they don't quit the the training because of the system yeah they quit because they have something changed in their life mm. or school or uh, i don't know yeah uh, there are uh, maybe two or three person they said that it's too hard i can't do that yeah i think 15 years it's not so much i suppose like so long as you're laying down from the beginning the idea that we don't care about the output what you actually achieve we mm. don't care how strong you are compared to everyone else i mean that's the whole the competition thing um we care that you're giving it your all to get yeah. the most for yourself out of this out of the practice um maybe that's the idea that you've woven into um your philosophy and classes and and yeah. your community and culture that you guys have created but, yeah but that that is that what i mean um i think i'm i'm the only one who was training um since since 2000 yeah uh, give classes and then try to go out with the students every saturday because when I was a handball player, I saw you have to push the, the talents. Mm. And I think that that will be the, the future also by us in Parker Run, um, that we have new classes for the guys um, who want more. 
Sure. Yeah. And I think that that's also a change that we we have to go in parkour. Okay. Because if you wanna, if you say parkour is for for every for everyone, and um, then one guy will come in two thousand and twenty eight mm. after Olympia, and you say no, if you wanna go to Olympia, we don't support you. Okay. I see. I see yeah. I see what you're saying. So, yeah. So yeah. For me, for me as a a former handball player, I have to say, yes, of course. Maybe mm. personally, I don't like the IOC, um, but if a 20 years old guy want to go on the Olympic game of parkour and this, that's the dream of him, mm. and the student from me, from me, then why I don't have, uh, why I can't uh, support him? I have to help him. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a very interesting point. I, I had a similar realization in a conversation with Georgia Donati Clark, who is working with Parkour Generations now. Um, there are so many different types of people and there are with different motivations. And some yeah. people are very driven by yeah. these extrinsic factors. Some people are very driven by competition. And we don't want to, if that is their reason for moving, and if we just want to get people moving full stop, no matter what it is, we don't want to exclude those people with those motivations. So if we have a culture and community gym or whatever um, that supports not only the culture of effort, the stuff that Parkour One, I feel like, has stood for since the beginning, as far as I know, and then also this um, the competitive side as well. So these other people that are driven by that then i feel like we'll get more and more people moving and doing parkour we don't want to exclude like any one person yeah. of course like some gyms can be they can turn in like maybe as i said earlier if the olympics becomes more of a thing jump free run from the netherlands or something could be one of those gyms yeah. that yeah. just run their classes as like as a way to see where the talent is and then it's like you can come to our advanced classes and we'll keep an eye on you to make sure if you can go on to be in team Netherlands or something and go into the fig, fig competitions or whatever, and just yeah. like work, use their Academy as like a, a talent pool to scout. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's too far in the other direction where, where we're just way too competitive, but yeah, I don't know. I'm going to stop talking now because <laughs> oh, I think we're, when you go out and train, then you have to you learn from from the movement behind you. And yeah. Then you have to look uh, what's what's next. And if you if you um, do this now with the with parkour as as um, as culture, then you have to look back and see what happens to the skaters, to the snowboarders, mm. uh, to the surfers, and maybe you can learn from this movement. And I think we have so much um, energy, so much good people. Um, we don't have to uh, fight against each, each other. So we have to create something. And so while we don't learn from the, from the other culture, I think in the, in the future we have maybe others, uh, other, um, uh, I don't know, name the name in English, like professional uh, yeah. jobs, jobs. Maybe maybe we have a, a sports science expert in parkour. Maybe we have something that are only um, trained uh, the top athletes. Maybe we have a physio or a doctor uh, or expert in parkour. That's that's nice. Why why, why not? Mm. But um, I think we don't have to fight against something. We have to create something. If you go out and yeah. fight against the wall. You, that's bullshit. You have to find a way what you can do with this wall. Mm. Yeah. I, I feel like my top priorities are getting as more people in as many people into parkour as possible. And then the second <clears throat> the second thing below that is trying to create a community and culture that has a good relationship to their practice. Yeah. And and that involves um, 
like parkour as a communal thing as well so if you don't have the best relationship to your practice that can also rub off on everyone that you're practicing with so yeah. if you are one of these competitive people may like pathologically competitive then maybe you're making the training environment a very bad place um for other people i mean um and that's that's yeah i don't know and a and a good relationship to your practice as well is meaning a good balance of these intrinsic and ex extrinsic motivations where yeah. you're focusing on outcome or the experience um of parkour i don't know if this is just throwing a load of stuff no. at you guys. <laughs> no it's okay um it's because when you talk about extrinsic motivation um back in the days when we start we don't have youtube mm. so you have to get ask yourself why you want to train and today i think we have, we don't have many people who, who talk like you many many experienced people um who are so famous and you are so so uh, incredible good athlete um thank you because yeah because the most of them they grow up now with instagram or with youtube and that's like a platform and you have to show something and for me it's like mm. I don't care about how many followers I have about the clicks. It's for me, it's like a uh, uh, like a library, mm. and I can watch it ten years later. Yeah, but I think for 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 the guys who start today, it's really really hard to say I I train only for myself. Yeah, because everything <clears throat> in the in the bubble is is the opposite. Mm. And like I said, it it is fine to not be training only completely for yourself in the sense of the experience yeah. but some people are way too far on the spectrum of training for an outcome and yeah. if we're talking instagram and social media the yeah. outcome of acquiring followers to to what end exactly like yeah whether you you want to make it as a professional that's completely that's completely valid and um a very a very good pursuit to try and make mm. your passion into uh your hobby although it's it's a very could be argued very um short-sighted thing to try and do yeah. given that that we're in an industry that is <laughs> uh a bit of a wasteland <laughs> yes. but um but yeah a lot of people have um think that just more followers equal um an income when it's really not that simple and i think a lot of it is just being taken in by the extrinsic motivation of followers and likes feel very nice and it's that short dopamine hit <laughs> um, yeah. and maybe that's if that is your um if that's your north star your main reason then maybe that's a pretty if we're talking good relationship to our practice, that's yeah. not the best. And I don't think they're going to be the people they may be saying that, yeah, parkour is my life, man. It's like, and they won't be the ones that will be still training for themselves. And yes. yeah, yeah, when they're 50 or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I, and I think it's a lot of, 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 it gives you a lot of pressure. If you are, maybe you have a, a really nice video and you have two million clicks so everybody is prepared for the next one and then you have to show something who is similar mm. and so i think it's a lot of pressure by you if you want to earn earn money from parkour um you can give class or workshops or you mm. can be a crazy guy an influencer and crazy guys we have so many and as you said maybe they are here for five years and then the next one is coming and mm. if they want to do that it's for me it's okay but it's different mindset <laughs> yeah 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 it's very true oh boy I, f I feel like we could keep going going on talking about this for for a long time and it is a hard one talking about like the motivations for training and everything but um yeah. i think you are a great example of um someone who has a good relationship with their practice and um yeah i wish more people had uh that magic spark whatever you have i mean it seems ineffable maybe you don't even know what it is um 
and I wish I could give people that as well like because I feel that in myself with uh because I also since I've started training in 2006 have not really felt any dip in motivation I always want to get better or just if I'm not getting better I still enjoy the training sessions where I'm just going out and I'm just stoked to do some flow lines or just drill some different eight foot standing pre's sorry I sound like I'm cracking up and about to cry but I promise there's just something in my throat oh parkour man (laughs) it's emotional (laughs) (laughs) um right maybe now is a good time to um talk about the uh strength training that you do and how much of it is this structured kind of sessions based around performance and how much of it is more the old school methods where it is um these extreme endurance challenges and just seeing what your body can do through the power of the mind kind of thing um yeah yeah. yeah. i think the first 10 years it was only body weight training because we never saw everybody said if you do parkour you don't need a gym yeah Yeah, if you do parkour 20 years ago and just jumping around you don't need a gym yes that's true yeah (laughs) if you want to go farther and maybe you want to learn more about your body, what is possible for you, but it's your limit, then you have to train with weight. That's a fact. And so now I train twice a week, sometimes three, three times a week um, with weight in my gym. I have own gym in the yeah. Uh, yeah. room. And um, the other days I do conditioning stuff like repetition or um, quadrupedi, you know that, that mm. kind of stuff. And um, I, I, for me, I, I need, I need a, a plan. I have to write it down and say, um, at Monday, I have to go out maybe 30 minutes or two hours. Um, just the, the warm up and the strength training is like a plan. Everything between is it's coming, just yeah. flow. And um, I feel when I want to do big precision jumps, then I have to prepare like maybe two, three weeks, a little bit more with weight training. And if I want to do like running stuff, then I do conditioning. Mm. But um, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of, of um, like CrossFit style. Okay. Uh, I, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a really um, efficient way to go as to reach the goal mm-hmm. uh, with the CrossFit system, but if you make a little bit mistakes, then you are uh, injured. Hmm. So I like. More Could the, argue the same about parkour as, as well, though. Yeah. If yeah, I were to, <laughs> if I <yeah>. were to. <laughs> but I think we, we in parkour we have a little bit um, uh, less people who who do the. It's um, nah, it's uh, difficult to explain. It's hard. It's hard. You, you have you have you have more competitive, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. This, in parkour, you, of course, there are a lot of people who destroy himself. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there's a part of our culture which is very much like destroying yourself, and a large part of CrossFit culture that is yeah. also seem intent on destroying themselves and. Mm-hmm. Are getting all sorts of overuse injuries that yeah i but i think feel like what you're saying maybe is um behind our culture like it, safety especially with the movement stuff that we're doing is um it's a high concern um but yeah i, I wonder how many because <laughs> there are probably more parkour bales online than there are crossfit failures i'd imagine although the crossfit failures are very funny when you see them doing those butterfly pull-ups and then they like they come off the bar and and suitcase themselves on the ground um and yeah also like the the olympic weightlifting stuff for very high reps for time i think that's where uh i assume a lot of accidents are happening as well with crossfit yeah but i think also if you i don't know if you you can compare this 
directly because if somebody in parkour is failing, it's mm. always funny because when you, when you hit the ground, uh, you can uh, uh, upload it on YouTube. Yeah. You do, uh, a little accident. In yeah. The first scene, and maybe it looks not so funny. Mm. And Very definitely funny. overuse injuries don't look as good on social yes. media as, yes. as uh, <laughs> some some reason the sadism stuff doesn't really work that <laughs> well. Like you can't you can't laugh at <laughs> Yeah, it's it's yeah, it doesn't no, really so, get sold that well on social media. <laughs> no, to come back from for your question is, um, I train every every day, but training is maybe five days are really intense. Mm -hmm. Because when I give classes, I always move a little bit, um, also and do the the strength training, mm -hmm. and then it's uh, like uh, you said, active, um. Active recovery, rest. Yeah, maybe just uh, balance on the rail or just mm. doing a uh, easy jumps. Um, for me, it's it's that's uh, yeah recovering. A easy training is for me recovering. Mm. Okay. I think that I trained every every day since two thousand, except I was injured. Right. Oh my god, that's in incredible! Every day. <laughs> Yeah. in some way shape or form yeah some way sometimes maybe just push-ups or little jumps but i can't remember a day when i do nothing that's amazing when when i was maybe i was sick yes of course yeah yeah but, yeah, yeah sure yeah um so yeah being like that that sounds incredible i mean maybe that is the secret source to uh longevity and parkour staying yeah. active but just the right amount um because i'm pretty sure um i've heard sebastian fukan say a similar thing i think he's 47 now um and i've, I've heard that he tries to move to some extent every day um yeah and yeah so maybe that's what it is <laughs> Yeah, um, I remember Sebastian, he was 2016 by me, I can't remember, 18. And then he talked about uh, the seasons, yeah. the seasons of life. Um, there are times to move a little bit less and a little, times to move mm. a little bit more. And for me, I don't have a season. Yeah, I don't <laughs> I have don't a season. I don't know what he means, but for me, it was it's like only two things. It's uh, Swiss chocolate <laughs> <laughs> and uh, try to be fun, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just enjoy yourself. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess with the seasons he's talking about, like in winter and everything, the yeah. intensity goes down, and and you you just stay at a very baseline level of um, like very very light. Um, yeah. I feel like my my intensity is is pretty high all year round um it's just how much of that practice is how much of that work is in a gym or outside on the streets yeah. doing parkour um because because it's weather based <laughs> we have wet season or dry season yes. <laughs> um so yeah i'll be i'll be i'll be sharpening the axe in the in the gym in in the winter um but one one point is maybe it's interesting maybe you had it also in 2006 you start 2006 right or yeah. five yeah yeah, yeah. Um, in the beginning there was not it was the, the definition from a to b as, yeah. as fit as possible with your body and the first training it was not the, the goal who to stick on the wall or to mm -hmm. to make a six time um retours. Yeah. yeah yeah you have to you don't have to stick you, you don't need needed a roll if you have strong legs so the, the, the mindset from the training was totally different. Mm. I was just jumping on the wall and to go for, go go further. And now today it's like you have one spot and you try to find so many challenges possible. Mm. And it's totally different. And I, I like both. So yeah, if you don't need a, a roll and you have strong legs, yeah. I don't, maybe it's something for you. With uh, the next training with Roger. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you can say yeah, I have strong legs. I don't need a role. <laughs> <laughs> listen okay i i am okay with rolling on concrete in moderation but when it's <laughs> when it's like for half an hour or something consistently like destroying yourself <laughs> yeah yeah maybe it's the volume yeah. that's more a problem say, on cobblestones yeah. we had we had in 2005 or six we had a few guys when we have a hell night mm. um, we have to roll uh thing and when they wear white t-shirts mm. you see the red the blood it's like oh my god like a cross because they have to do it uh, on both times, sides ten times right and then you have to, to cross and oh, amazing. A, red, a red cross is perfect and you did it right <laughs> if it's only only on the right side then you have to train more so oh my god but this is back in the days now today yeah you guys are a cult I'm yeah, I'm reporting you to Cult Watch. <laughs> no, today you have you have a you have a phone from the parents, so uh, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, so true. Oh, we change a lot just about that time. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't. I um. I'm not sure where to. I have the question about eight three four. <laughs> oh no later later yes okay. um, before we move on to the from the um uh strength and conditioning physical challenge stuff in 2017 or 2016 when i came to moon singing you were telling me about this grand goal of yours to quadrupedi backwards yeah up a the mountain moon. uh yeah. just for our listeners in case you don't know quadrupedi is on all fours yeah crawling backwards um so <laughs> is that still something that you wish to achieve or have you kind of uh oriented yourself in a different direction no it's it's still still a goal mm. because um it's not that i have uh to um that i i can ever sing mm. uh, it's it's just i it was idea how 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 far i can go because i had seen a documentary about a, a climber who was stuck in the in the wall right and he, and he i think was four days in the wall and yeah 127 hours yeah, the film, was, yeah aaron ralston so, yeah and there's so a big mindset that i thought actually we are in parkour we are of course we are training hard and mm. And uh, we have a lot of really nice guys, but I think we are far, far away from from a mindset um, like like the climber stuff. If you yeah. do if you a mistake, you are dead. May maybe you in, in in Asia, yes, but it's not the normal normal day. Mm. And for me, it was it, it, it's a goal to see um, maybe I can do it in two days or in three days. Maybe I need uh, support with, uh, yeah, maybe mm. seven uh, students who do the same. Um, but actually, uh, it's a little bit. Um, it's not so funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, yeah, they're, they're they're like, why put yourself through these immense endurance tests of? Yep. physical strength and courage like and and that's the that's the thing as well like you mention um this climber and mm -hmm. everything that he went through you you are talking about 127 hours the guy that gets his arm stuck and then has to cut yeah. it off yeah yes. aaron ralston yeah he didn't choose that challenge but by some miracle he was strong enough to endure it and survive I think a lot of people in modern society are super soft and, <laughs> and yes, the difference is we are choosing these challenges, which, so they're not real challenges in a way, but they definitely arm us for situations in life, challenges that we don't choose. Mm. And I think the, the challenges that we choose show ourselves what we're really made of and give ourselves this confidence and if something does come up in your life you know 
and you have this confidence in yourself that you can go through it because you've chosen and overcame so many grueling horrible challenges in your practice mm. and i think that's that's such a huge part of what parkour is and maybe that's what the founders saw in it and that's why such a large amount of their practice was this uh intense physical training for their mind and body and the the very high scary jumps for their mind and body it's it's the the meta behind the practice and and that's why it's spoken about as parkour being uh, a tool for your life i guess and yes yeah yeah it's a ph philosophical question because actually i don't know why why you want to do this <laughs> right <laughs> um yeah and and that's that's maybe like th there's no inherent reason behind it like but no it's just it was the beginning it was just a joke and then it was like maybe it's it's possible we should try mm. it was corona then we said okay we do it after and now it's like hmm, actually i want to do it but i i can't find people who help me <laughs> mm. so maybe i have to <laughs> find a, a, a um a little mountain mm. for the first step yeah yeah but, yeah, yeah. But, but you you talk about what you can um earn from the parkour for your life and i right. think you can do everything else and you can earn the same um if you if you do something with passion, if it's playing guitar or playing basketball or just a book or something, create something, design, if you do it with passion, it's it's you can earn the exactly same thing, except the movement. Mm. And the movement is something it's it's in the human human body from the beginning. And that's maybe why it's so special, because every every kid do, did it. Um and he was out and then he climbed on the wall and then the mother or father said, come down. And yeah, why? Because we don't do that here. Uh, that's the only thing is, is special in, in parkour. Every, everything else, I think you, you get it also. You can earn it for your life. You can do ice okay. It's the same thing. Overcome obstacle, mm. be training hard. So it's not so special how uh, many, many traces in the world think we are really, really special. But mm. I think we are just a little part okay. of a yeah. lot of different sports. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I think there are a handful of sports, I feel, which maybe you can get a lot more value out of them and i think a key thing is ah oh, maybe it's not worth getting into <laughs> some something that is like the full package it, in a way that not only can challenge you but also where someone can express parts of the human spirit like the artistry side of parkour the sport side of parkour the yep. mental challenge side of parkour whether it be physical or mental um yeah i don't know there there are other sports that tick those boxes and we are um we are we are one of them i think and i'll i'll get, i'll keep going on and saying uh parkour is a is not unique but it is special yeah, um, and it, it's a it's a young uh, parkour is really young because we no nobody in the world did parkour his whole whole life. Yeah, so we have we can't say it's it's healthy if you do mm. sixty years parkour. I don't know. May, maybe I'm sixty five. I think it depends. It depends. It really uh, depends. Like going back to that relationship to your practice, as yeah. well as um, if, if we're talking healthy in terms of physical, then not fucking up your body with uh acute and chronic injuries but yeah. with a relationship to your practice thing healthy yeah. mentally as yeah. well but um yeah but you have a kid right yeah now he's uh, eight months eight months eight how's months. that going 
Uh, really nice. He he's uh, he want to walk with. Eggs. Oh hell yeah! I just want. This is Noel. Noel. No oh. Nile. Nile. Oh, Nile. is it spelt yeah. like the river? Okay. There is a river. River. The river Nile. Is that what you're saying? It's N. Yeah, oh. N A E O L. Oh. Okay. Now, Nile. Yes. Okay. And, and yeah. is is uh, I mean, there are many. There are fair few parkour fathers now, and <laughs> and um, maybe you know Rafe Kelly and Jason Matten. They they yes, seem to be two course. two yeah. very old Jason school Matten. parkour people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> two yeah. very old school parkour people that are intent on making um, their child or children into these weapons in all uh, yeah. manners in yeah. all senses of the word uh yeah. what what do you uh, do you have any intentions like this for your child or are you just gonna like kind of play it cool i know bart van der linden is is letting um andreas kind of choose uh what he wants in terms of getting him into parkour or other other stuff but then it, jason matten um is taking his um daughter into the sea every day <laughs> which is like a baby and then a toddler every day in the sea yeah. no matter what weathers and they used to live in brighton and i I'd, I'd be cycling along like in battered by the wind on my bike like going against the horrible headwind horrible rain lashing down on me and crossing the cycle path to waving at me is jason matten with his baby and they've obviously just been in the sea and i'm like what like the waves yeah. are massive and it's like what are you doing it's like yeah, yeah um i don't know yeah. <laughs> not, um, saying, not saying that this is uh um something that <laughs> you're not going to be on that part of the spectrum of extreme i hope no 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 um i saw it by by roger roger has three kids and mm. Now the uh, oldest one is 14 and he's <laughs> is in the training since uh, eight years. So I think it's not possible to be a tracer and your kids don't do maybe a, a short time parkour because when you're outside, I have to move and then he will see it. But mm. I think for me, it's important that he do a lot of polysportive like ball sports or yeah, he, he can choose, but if he, I think it's it's the way he's going. Maybe he will train for uh, five years. I don't know. And then he decided not to yeah. maybe stop. For me, it doesn't matter. The goal is just he ha he have to move something. Mm. To sport, yeah. Sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't want to um, create a, a parkour monster and yeah, 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 yeah. The the Olympic uh, star in two thousand and thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, I I really it went when <laughs> hopefully I do have a kid someday. Um, yeah. but I that is not something I would want for my child. I mean, I certainly wouldn't push them into it if they wanted it. Like yeah. I would want them to I would want to create the environment for my child where they really enjoy movement, no matter what sport yeah. it is, whether yeah. it's parkour or anything, but yeah. really enjoy sport, some kind of movement practice that is physical um and i yeah. will force them into it no no i want to create the <laughs> environment where they want to do that like yes with yes, certain values and, and yeah. stuff i think it's, it's the, the culture around the the movement it's if we go into fontainebleau i think everybody's move if you do a barbecue at my garden it's just just uh you, you leave it you leave it and then you see what happens yeah i want to talk about your film homage homage au parkour yes yeah yeah homage au parkour yeah. um so this is you you've kept me waiting for this for a very long time now um you started it in 2020 and yeah. you have this is a documentary um and you have a long list of names some of which I'm going to horrendously butcher, but the likes of Dumpty Tommaso, Jason Paul, Daniel Illabaka, Toby Seeger, uh, me, Phew, huge name right there. One yes. of one of the one of the coolest and best. Uh, Hazal, 
Silke Sol Frank, Christian Harmer, Pedro Salgado, Oliver Thorpe, Bart van der Linden, Didi, Marcio Felipe, Bogdan Svetkovic. Um, all kinds of names. And yeah, Max Henry, Joel, you got Min, Lorena Abreu, Noah Di- Diogena, um, Ehab as well. Hell yeah. And didn't you have some of the, the founders as well? They're not yes, Char- on the list. But... Yeah, Charles and um, Chao. But they <laughs> they didn't get it. I I was driving oh. for uh, to France and then it that uh, doesn't happen. And for me it was like, um, yeah, I can't ask three or four or five times. So I just yeah 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 true. Oh, Sodom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So you got interview footage from from all of these people. Yeah. Um, with great crash questions as well. And um, oh, I wish I could redo mine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what's the state of this film now? Like, what when when might it be coming out? Um, he's out. It's out? Yeah, he's on, the, on YouTube, yes. What do you mean? How have yeah. I missed this? Yeah, I don't know. What the? What? <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? You're yes. making me seem like an arsehole. There's no problem. And no problem. Um, uh, yeah, Omar Shop Parkour is like the tribute. I think in English is tribute. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we we yeah. use the word homage as well. Um, yeah, okay. We got so, a lot. Uh, of, we got a lot of French words since 1066. <laughs> I, I can send you the the link on YouTube. But you know me. It's I I didn't uh, make a, a big big stuff. For yeah. Me it was like just a, a milestone for the community, and not uh, for the clicks. It's just. It was really nice to to have every everybody on board. A lot of the guys didn't answer me, um, so the guy, the list, uh, yeah, fuck him, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, you, you can watch it on YouTube. I can send you the list, and it, it was so difficult because everybody was what was sixty minutes, yeah, the interview. yeah, and yeah, yeah. Pick maybe two or three things, so. Um, it's a, it's a nice documentary, but it's uh, maybe five percent of the of the knowledge. Oh hell yeah, that, yeah yeah. Uh, but that's was, a lot. Of, that's a lot of people. It's probably yes. still a lot of of knowledge uh, as it is. What what was the um? So what is the film, and what was the intention, and did you meet that intention? Like, did yeah. you meet that goal? Um, for me, it was. I was so maybe 2012 the first time about the documentary with parkour right and that never happens and um, then i said okay now with uh, with corona it's an opportunity to make the video the zoom mm. with everyone because everyone is uh, was uh, happy not to travel to switzerland or yeah. i have to travel in every uh, continent mm. and so yeah, in 2021, it was finished. And the intense was to to hear every opinion from mm. the old school to the new generation, from the, um, the competition to the not, not competition stuff. And for me, it was just, okay, now everybody talks about the same. Because in the past, every I hear... Uh, no competition, Olympia is bullshit, blah, blah, blah. And mm. the guys who are speaking behind the back. And I said, when we have a, a movie with everything in it, then you can, may, maybe you've, you've, yeah, you don't like it, or maybe you like it. But there was, in, in the past, we, ha- we hadn't a documentary who has different opinion. Yeah. Just, just one guy who talk about something and, or one guy who travel yeah country so that that's the reason why i have why i did it yes yeah that's amazing oh my god i need to go and watch this now what am i <laughs> doing with my life how did i <laughs> i'm so sorry and <laughs> and of course when sharing this i will i will um i will will share this at the same time the the film um that is super interesting because it is very true and all these views need to be uh represented in this in this clear way as so many of us know we talk about parkour community, but what do we really mean? It is loads of little sub communities and yeah. and bubbles like parkour one. Parkour yeah. one, 
community yeah. in in Berlin and Bern Munsing and very different from yeah. even even there are people that practice in those same cities that have a completely different outlook on parkour it's the same with london with um along this spectrum between like the team fat guys and mm. the um parkour generations guys and then the um super double xl yeah. guys as well like this is in the same city and they're very very different outlooks on parkour um yeah and that's not even country to country differences um that's amazing. Yeah, between individuals as well like the difference outlooks on the sport and it only makes sense because it is because it is such a broad practice as well but yeah, yeah i'm i'm very interested um yeah because and i am writing this book where i'm also trying to solidify because parkour is a very difficult thing to define and solidifying all the commonalities between all these different bubbles and outlooks on parkour is what i'm really interested interested in uh yeah. that's why i'm so pissed off that i haven't seen this film that i've been waiting for <laughs> but that's really interesting because when you see when you say, uh, say um there are different opinion or maybe definition um mm. may, maybe in the future i don't know i don't hope it but in the future, there is a, like a definition with rules, like like the football, and rules. then yeah, I don't know, I don't ho I hope not. Oh, as in in the future, right, 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 right. The future, but if you look in the in the in the football game, there are rules, and if you don't do it, then it's not football. Right. What about right? your five principles? They're rules, mate. Come on. No, that's like uh, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm values. joking. Values. <laughs> They sound like rules to me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm joking. No, um, and I, I really hope it comes not this way. But then maybe you can say you you are not doing parkour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this but, is. I not... mean, that's how that's how it's been from the from the beginning. It's like, no, yeah. you're not doing parkour. You're yes. doing free yeah. running, or this isn't parkour. When really yeah. they're saying this isn't what I think parkour is, and parkour to you is very different from parkour yeah. to the next person and yeah so that's the thing i want to find the commonalities between all these people that say yeah this is parkour. yeah it's really it's really nice to hear that but it's also really um kind of motivation and of kind of not demotivation but i think so oh come on guys we we have to mm. yeah help each other not because yeah. sometimes what I what I hear and and online or YouTube or it's just I think we have I had so many years to fight against something mm. and that that's that's bullshit you you don't have to fight some yeah I I don't imagine you were one of the people on the forums back in the day that were arguing about every minute detail about philosophy and training methods and and stuff like this yeah we had actually we we had. A guy in 2004, five, in our class, and then he tried to do a backflip. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, Roger says, "One, once again, then you can go home, because at uh... this time, <laughs> at this time you don't uh, do the acrobatic stuff. It's just mm. you have to go from A to B, and every turning stuff it makes you slower. So yeah. you don't do that." We don't do that here. <laughs> but it it must have been so hard to to say that and then reconcile that with every piece of media that inspired you to start training, like the yeah. like the founders in every piece of media, including Speed Airman, David yeah. Bell, on yeah. Advanced Toujours, like half yeah. of that video is in a gym doing flips, <laughs> like, yeah. and and Speed Airman is the same, and then. Uh, the 2006 documentary Generation Yamakasi, like there is so much acrobatics in that. Like I don't know how you can like I don't know. And I, I know I David's see. parkour is meant to be the A A to B kind of thing. Um, yeah, I can explain it. it it's um, but, the first step is conditioning stuff. Right. You do it repetition thousand times, quadrupedi two three hours, and then the second step is the acrobatic stuff. And right. if you okay, are, okay, I see. Yeah, if if you are um, going to a football uh, training, you don't do like a pichigleta 
or you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so it, that was the mindset. The, our students, first thing, you don't foundation. Do I stuff. see. I see. You have to. You have to training hard. You have to. And then we re realized that's not. If you if you want to do it, if it motivates you, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I got ahead of myself then and, <laughs> and interrupted you with a whole spiel yeah, about no. <laughs> the founders of their I, videos. I did, a lot, I did a lot of acrobatic stuff, but I'm really bad in it. Um, yeah, same. But I, I, I do it only in my garden. I never, mm. sometimes I make a video, but for me, it's there are so many. If, if somebody wants to learn acrobatic stuff, he don't have to come to me. He has yeah. Go to yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I will be, I will be yeah. the worst to, to yeah. teach my students. <laughs> I will, I will refer on. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh man, yeah. Your garden, your garden's great as well. Um, He's the stuff up. that, the stuff that you can do on bars, like you are so, so technical, and you give me great hope for, um, for the future in terms of, uh. Like I want to do the stuff that you're doing when you're forty. Thanks. Like I want to do the stuff that you're doing like now. Like I'm incapable of a lot of the stuff that that you can do. And your the the recent bar line, or or the the recent video you made on um a parkour park, yeah, really really cool lines, and it all looks so smooth and creatively. It is amazing as well. And Thanks. oh man, you are you are such a shining example. Thanks. And Thanks. I'm very grateful for you. Thanks. Um, yeah. It's a really, really funny story because um, I hate bars in the beginning. It yeah. was like, I, I said, I never swinging because that's really danger. Um, and then I had my, my only accident in 2008 when I was slipped out and hit my knees, my knee. And then I, my, my friend said, maybe you have to train your upper body. Mm. put a few rails in your garden in 2008 okay then i train swinging because i can't uh, do uh, exercise stuff with the legs yeah and then i realized hey that's a really nice that's a really nice technique and if you if you train it's not it's not dangerous yeah yeah and now, yeah. And now it's it's the the most it's my favorite mm. uh, so <laughs> never never charge a book by his cover so. yeah <laughs> Yeah, amazing. So the moral of the story is get a bar set up in your garden. <laughs> no, the moral of the story is get good at the stuff. Practice the stuff that you're shit at, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And um, I think it's when I my, my favorite skill is creativity mm. because I, I, I can't jump much, much far. I can't. Maybe I have fast arms. Yes, but mm. I'm I'm still on the way. I, I try to getting slow as uh, try to getting worse as slow as possible. That's my mindset. <laughs> the inverse of slow as possible. Yeah, getting worse <laughs> as slow as possible. Oh, because getting slow. worse as slow as possible. Yes, yeah. that's a that's a good goal for for aging gracefully. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the, and a the few techniques I, I'm still can go farther because I now I have the gym with with really nice weights. And now in, with 40, I jump maybe this farther in a half year. Oh wow. Okay. So it's it's just it's just a, the kind of training system you you use. Yeah. Then you can still still make progress. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. As I said, a shining example. <laughs> <laughs> um I can't wait uh until I'm also in the 40 club and have yeah. been training parkour for... but, but, but you know 40 is the new 20 <laughs> <laughs> oh well no, no. we'll see if that's true <laughs> I, I will come to you yeah london I, I yeah i plan a trip in september how are you gonna do that you're afraid of flying i, w I go with the train <laughs> to paris and i'm under the oh yeah oh yeah of course yeah yeah the Thank, thank God for the Eurostar. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much, Ramon. Do you have uh, any final words? Ooh, final it doesn't words. have to be about the death of Etrefort. <laughs> uh -huh, okay. Yeah, that's. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. You want to talk about Etrefort? 
also or... not if you don't not if you don't want to like, yeah. we can I, I can say something but it's not if you want to talk why they they stop produce then i think you have to to ask ask pierre yeah um, okay sure but for me it's um it was before the brand mm. i was strong like at four and after the brand for me it's not changing a lot um except wearing the baggy pants um right. But how it happened and why, yeah, I think you have to ask the guys. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, the last words. Um, yeah, I think may, may, maybe an homage or, or, or uh, to Storo. <laughs> <laughs> Is that think... your next film? No, no, <laughs> yeah, oh, we can do that, yes. <laughs> no, no um, I, think, I think you guys make a really, really nice job. A long time, a really, really. 15 years? Um, when, it, when you, 13, 13 years, 13 it will be years. 14 years in October. Yeah, um, because um, I think one guy who changed the, the, the game was Danny Labaka in 2005, six, mm. and then you guys came and you not only changed the game, I think you you make a new one and um, you, <laughs> you inspire so many people. And I, yeah, I just wish you. Uh, the best and good luck and i really hope you guys are in london when i come yes yes please please let me know the rail stuff together yeah hell yeah yeah i really enjoyed that last time yeah all right cool man thank you so much um peace out everyone cheers for listening <laughs>